Year in and year out, the Blue Angels dazzle crowds across the world with their razor-sharp formation flying and the raw power of the F-A-18 Super Hornet. They represent the pinnacle of aviation excellence. To the awestruck crowd, these pilots are enigmatic figures, identified by numbers on the tails of their jets. But behind these numbers are extraordinary men and women, skilled beyond measure, who believe it or not, only do the job for a few years. Ever wondered what it takes to don the iconic blue uniform and what it's like to be part of this prestigious team? Strap in, and let's find out. Formed in 1946, the Blue Angels are more than just an aerial demonstration team. They're a legacy. As the United States Navy Flight Demonstration Squadron, their mission goes beyond just entertainment. They're ambassadors of naval aviation, inspiring the next generation of sailors and pilots. But what are the qualifications required for such an esteemed assignment? In order to be considered as a Blue Angel jet demo pilot, you must be an active duty Navy or Marine Corps pilot and apply with the recommendation of your commanding officer. You must be aircraft carrier qualified with approximately 1,250 tactical jet flight hours, have completed an operational fleet tour, and have completed advanced flight training with an average or greater composite score. The Blue Angels pick their own replacements. All applicants are interviewed by the outgoing team and must be selected unanimously. The only exception is Blue Angel number one, the commander of the squadron, who is selected by the Chief of Naval Air Training with the help of an informal panel of Blue Angels alumni. Known simply as BOSS, this individual must have at least 3,000 tactical jet flight hours and have commanded a tactical jet squadron. In total, three pilots are selected every year to serve either a two or three year tour. The length of the assignment depends on the position they are assigned. More on that in a bit. In November, the Blues perform their final homecoming air show at their base in Pensacola, Florida. After this show, three of the pilots, accounting for half of the six-jet formation, leave the team, becoming alumni. They will return to the fleet for active duty assignments. The three rookies then join the three returning pilots in El Centro, California for winter training. These three months between show seasons are a true crucible. With 120 flights, twice daily, six days a week, the team perfects their craft. It's a relentless process of briefings, debriefings, and meticulous video analysis. Here, every mistake is acknowledged, and every lesson learned is a step towards the elusive goal of a perfect air show. The rookies are instructed by the three senior pilots on the team. These pilots seem seasoned by comparison, but remember, most of them are only in their second year on the team. They were in the rookie seats not that long ago. The Blue Angels demonstration is split up into three basic components. The four-plane diamond formation showcases the tight formation flying of the team. The two solo planes demonstrate the maximum performance of the F-18. And the six-plane delta formation joins both segments together. The four diamond pilots serve two-year tours, and the solo pilots serve three. The crew rotation works out like this. Number one serves two years. Before their first year begins, they shadow the outgoing boss for a few weeks, and then are mostly trained by number two, who will be in his or her second year. As the flight leader and commanding officer of the squadron, boss is not only responsible for flying and leading the demonstration, but also managing the 150 plus men and women that make up the Blue Angels pilots, maintainers, and additional personnel. Number two serves their two years in the same position on the right wing of the boss. Their role on the team is to set the distance and look of the diamond while in flight. Their selection is offset by a year from the selection of a new boss. So, in their first year, they are trained by a veteran boss. In their second, they train the new boss. Number three serves two years in the diamond, with the first year flying as number three on the left wing, and then transitioning to number four in the slot position for the second year. As number three, this pilot is responsible for maintaining the balance and symmetry of the formation. In their second year, number three transitions to number four and will become the team safety officer, handle a lot of radio communication responsibility for the diamond, and serve as the lookout for the boss during maneuvers as they are the only one with visibility of all jets in the formation. They are also responsible for training the incoming number three pilot, who will take over the number four slot next year. The Solos serve three-year tours, and their progression is unique. The first year, they start off as number seven, the narrator of the show and point person on the ground with each show site. They will also do media rides using the two-seat variant of the F-18 Hornet, flying VIPs like politicians, influencers, teachers, and more at each show site. 
they do not fly in the demo in their first year. Their second year, they enter the demo as number six, the opposing solo. Their job is to fly like hell. Some have called it the best job in the Navy because all you've got to do is fly an insanely fun flight profile. In their third year, they become number five, the lead solo, and in addition to training the new number six, they assume the role of operations officer for the squadron. While not the highest ranking officer, number five is usually the most senior blue angel on the team. Sometimes, pilots are not able to complete their training or may be replaced part of the way through the show season due to performance issues. If someone can't be trusted, they are gone. It may sound harsh, but it's primarily a safety concern. There is no room for error in the sky when flying as closely as the Blue Angels do, and the team is built on trust. They have to know that every member of the team is going to be exactly where they are supposed to be, when they are supposed to be there. If a role needs to be filled in the middle of training or the season, typically a former Blue Angel is recalled to the team. It's just too specialized a job, and the quickest way to train up a new team member is to go back to someone who's been through it all before. Once training at El Centro is complete, the team kicks off their show season. For nine months, the team visits roughly 30 different show sites and performs 60 shows, with just as many practices in between. Over the course of the year, the team will improve noticeably to a discerning eye, with much less distance between jets and formation, and at much lower altitudes. The Blue Angels are never truly finished training. They are always pushing the envelope, getting ever closer to the perfect show. Because they are human, and humans make mistakes, a perfect show is probably not possible. But it is a core part of the team's identity to always strive for the unattainable always chasing perfection. As if being an incredible pilot isn't enough, the team members must also fulfill the other half of their mission day in and day out, public outreach. After every show, they visit the crowd, proving to, in particular, children everywhere that those jets are flown by people, and that anyone can do it with enough hard work, dedication, and ambition. After an incredible year, it's November again, and they rotate half the team out and the whole process starts again. This systematic approach is the backbone of the Blue Angels' long-term success. It is incredible that this level of excellence is able to be maintained with constant turnover and minimal loss of institutional knowledge. In a whirlwind of change, pilots swiftly transition from rookies to experts, passing on their baton of accumulated knowledge for next year's team to soar higher. But for those of us on the ground, it's seamless. And the team are what they've always been and always will be. The Blue Angels, a symbol of what's possible with unwavering dedication and a culture of excellence. Thank you for watching. If you're inspired by this high flying peak behind the curtain of an aviation institution, like, comment, and subscribe for more from Aerospace Horizons. Join us next time as we continue to explore the skies and beyond.